You know, the kind of Saturday I like. Last night, um, <laughs> Addie did it. She pulled off five purples in a row. So uh, in her school, every day, and they're, they're strict. In her school, school every day in, in kindergarten, they get graded. A uh, color thing. Red is fail. You know, you picked your nose or peed on the floor or something. Orange, picked your nose, spit at a kid or something. Both fails. Green is even Steven. You know, had a decent day. Uh, blue, pretty good. Blue is pretty good, right? You've been mostly respectful. Maybe you didn't listen on the playground or something, I suppose. Uh, but purple, purple's the gold standard. Purple, you were perfect the entire day. Yeah, like a gold star. Yeah, yeah, perfect week. So Addie did it like six weeks ago, maybe two months ago. And she was so proud of herself. And I took her to the, we, we all went to the jump place together, you know, place with the trampolines, whatever. And, and of course, like every kid, she's like, I want to go back next week. I said, no problem. You show me five purples and we will. And every week she tries. Now I notice the teacher, they, 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 five in the world. that's <laughs> the teachers are all a little different, right? And there must be one teacher that's hard to pry a purple out of because every week she'll come home with a couple of blues and three purples three blues and two purples. I've only seen her get a green once. Never seen her get it. You've never got an orange or a red, right? No. No. So this week, struts into the house. Five purples in a row. Now, we got a busy weekend. Ollie had baseball practice last night and this morning. So Amy went to the barn this morning. She's in Ontario with Ollie. Went to the barn this morning, checked on everybody. Ollie's practice is at 11 and we were taking four horses to the track to train in the race bikes today. So, uh, don't worry about the horses training. The, race. the babies are training. The race. It's more or less just to see the track. They're only going between 212 and 215, which is almost in reverse, considering how they've been training. Um, so, it's more or less just to let them see the race bike, see the track, see, see everything for the first time. Uh, who were they? I think there was four. Uh, and I messaged everybody, uh, everybody, everybody about... Woodmere Betcha just banged her leg in the stall the other day, so we weren't going to tempt fate with her. Just kept her easy today and didn't take her to Mohawk. Um, so there was, what, like Chicago Hall, Century Legion, um, uh, Trevino on green, and I guess the little Wicked Philly, my Wicked Heart. Um, and I think they were taking down McPaisley also, which I was happy to hear as I didn't know where she was at all in her training. So... Um, uh, Amy got there, checked Betch's leg. It was fine. Um, she was happy with it. And then warmed up Century Legion. He trained it good, but she couldn't stay to go to Mohawk. So uh, James said he'd go down. James, Danny, Dominic, and Mario were in uh, Mohawk. Um, they're going down to train the babies at Mohawk. So all is well in Ontario right now. It was really hot. Gaslight, jog good, look good, I've been told. Princess is walking. She's going to start jogging next week. Everything is going great. I will. Now, as I said, Addie gets the purples. And she, I want to go to the jump place. I said, okay. I said, but mom's in Ontario. We're going to, I have to go to the Meadows tomorrow. Then I have to come back to train ready for landing at Jayport Beach Boy on Saturday. So I can't really, the jump place is going to be tight for time, you know. And she goes, well, I want to stay in a hotel. She's a great negotiator great negotiator. I said, okay, so here's the thought. And I'll tell everybody, I didn't even know this, but uh, for those of you coming for the open house, there's hotels around, there's a little Quinta at the end of the road, there's a Hampton Inn not far away, but very close to where I live and probably maybe 10, 11 minutes from the track is Twinsburg and there's a Hilton Garden Inn right at the bottom of our road. There's a Wendy's there, there's a really, really good Mexican place right across the street called Tulum. If sushi's your thing, I don't eat sushi. Ava likes sushi. There's a sushi place right beside that. If you go into Twinsburg, there's a great restaurant in there called Brewster's. That's probably the place to stay. If I was you, that's where I'd be staying. The Twinsburg, the Twinsburg Hilton Garden Inn. I might actually call them if enough people want to come and want to get rooms there. I don't know what kind of offers they make. I mean, it's a Hilton property, so who knows. But throughout my travels last year, I had accrued some points. So I said to Addie, there's a little pool, there's a hot tub, and of course it's a Hilton, so 
all the amenities you want are there, and the rooms, the beds are great. If you want, we can stay in the Hilton on my points. Friday night, we can go swimming from 8 to 10. We'll get home at 7. Uh, get you a bathing suit. I don't really know where they're at. We'll get you a bathing suit, and we'll go down. We'll eat at Tulum, and we'll uh, we'll go swimming for the evening. There's a Dairy Queen just a minute away, too. But I'll tell you what. That Dairy Queen is the most perfectly placed Dairy Queen on planet Earth. It is just off a major highway, right beside a pretty decent-sized city in Twinsburg. We pulled into the driveway, and the cars were wrapped right out the driveway. I just took a bully Yui and left. Ice cream's on, now off the table. So we stayed at the Elton last night, and uh, the girls went swimming all night. We watched uh, Spitfire Overseas. How good is this horse? How good is Spitfire Overseas? Off three and a bit weeks and wins an open trot. You know, Brett came up to me the other day. He did look a little peggy pulling up. He's got an old quarter crack that bothers him right front, and because of that quarter crack, he's taking let weight on his left front. They're doing their best to, to get it squared away. Dr. Latessa was literally in... Uh, in Columbus the other day doing work went over to Stacy's bar and said the same thing left knee is a little stressed a little sore not bad right quarter crack is the flashpoint they're trying to fix it so I think they're going to change his shoes again and put a Z bar on them uh, what we have on, well what we raced great ending in and what we trained uh, the other horse uh, Rose Run AJ and that was a great little thing the other day too a uh, little tiny side note just for a minute. We trained Rosa and AJ the other day, and he was unbelievably good. Now, we started off the week. He was on the right line a bit. Uh, just a little bit training. Hadn't done that in a while. Now, if you remember, all my partners on AJ will remember. Rosa and AJ was training good, but we'd get on the right line, get on the right line. You'd have to fish him off. He was super fast, but just biting that right line. We always thought it was the dog chain we had in his mouth. He'll wear one. Very politely. No. No, no, it was not the dog chain. Um, he had a little tiny, tiny little pus pocket below right front. So we just put a Z-bar on it. Now, a Z-bar is what I call a window bar, right? You have the half shoe, and then it cuts off a corner, and the bar goes right across down, back, back down to the heel. And it cuts off that corner of the foot. It can be the inside or the outside. In this case, it was the outside for Rose Run AJ. So we just put, we literally, he tested a little sore on his left front, that was the inside, I'm sorry, inside corner, and had blown a little pus pocket out of his right side. Turn that down, sweetheart. So, um, we just put window bars on him, or Z bars on him, and have left them on ever since. Monday, we took them off. Put his normal shoes on him, on the right line again. I said, I'm not, I'm not going to make this overly complicated. Put the window bars back on him. Put the window bars back on him, and I trained him on Thursday, uh, two six last half in like fifty eight seconds with a bow in his neck. Not a bow in his neck, because you got to keep the lines real quiet. But I could have went way more faster with him. He was very, very, very good. Our best trainer thus far this week was him, closely followed by Gorgeous Package. Only I only say that because they were both super strong and could have went way more. But the other Colts a big hefty, strong bugger, and gorgeous package, this dainty little filly that can rock. She's all muscle, but she's quite a bit smaller than you. Anyway, so uh, I believe Stacy was going to switch to a, uh, a window bar, a Z bar on, uh, on uh, Spitfire Overseas, but man, here's a horse, like I said, Brad had came to me the other day and he said, he's such a nice horse, Anthony. He said, you know, Stacy was going with him, and I was there, and I said, oh, you know, if you want, I'll go with the horse. He went with the horse. He said, I get all the half from 106, no hobbles on in the job cart. And he said, I wasn't even asking him. Nice car that is. I, he said, I wasn't even asking him. He said, I was just watching his gate, watching to see if he was good. He said, I looked down, snapped the watch, and looked down, 2, 5, and 1. Last half of 59 and 1. If you would have asked me before I looked down, I'd say... He said his speed is so effortless, it's unbelievable. And he carries it. I, I So I'll be quite frank, Sean, one of our clients, messages me right after this. Now I'm with the kids, we're coming out of the pool, I'm talking to Amy, we're, you know, I'm going over a list of the horses that I want to know what is going on with them for the next week. Okay, well you don't have to cry about it. Put it up here. Ava, you can eat that, drink that sweetie, that's the one mom likes. 
I'll take it. No, it's very good. It's got iced tea in it instead of lemonade. No, I like it. This is Amy's drink. Addie's being a drink snob. Very good. Whatever. So, um, I missed the race. I thought he raced at 922, and they always run slow at Scioto, so I'm thinking it's 928 or something. I'll put it on in a minute or so. Message comes in. Spitfire overseas a beast. I'm like, he couldn't possibly have won the Open being off three and a half weeks. So I watched the race, and around the last turn, I'm like, what's, what's so beast about him? He's sixth on the outside. He's not going to win. Come out of the last turn, and I saw the... They killed their horse getting rough on the front end. There's a horse used up. I'm like, oh my God, he does win this race. And then even 100 yards of wire, I'm like, nah, he's going to be second. I'm like, oh my. And it roars past him at the wire. Just such a nice horse. Such a nice horse. So I was super proud of what's going on. And you guys have to understand behind the scenes, you know, the work that they're putting. It's You have to understand this industry also. You know, everybody likes to cannibalize everybody else. Oh, this guy's not doing this right or that. And I'm guilty of it too. I'll see people training horses sometimes and think to myself, what's that guy doing? And then the horse will go out and race good. There's, that's what's so wonderful about horse racing is that just because I do, and, and James and I have almost gotten fist fights about this in the past because neither of us at the time realized it, and I didn't realize it either. Is it just because I think something is right and it works? doesn't mean it's the only way it would have worked. So what I mean by that is, let's say Rose on AJ. We, we take the shoes off him one day and we train him. He's on the right line. And then we say, oh, we're going to put flip-flops on him. We train him with flip-flops on Perfect. He was awesome. See, I told you that's what he needed. Well, the <laughs> Z-bar could have worked. Uh, an egg bar could have worked. A simple plate or a rim pad could have worked. But we don't think about that, right? We see that, <laughs> we see that it worked. And we were like, oh, see, I told you. And it's the same with people, right? We'll see them training horses. I'll see people training all the horses, tra training horses all the time. And I'm sure people see us say, "Well, these idiots out there training these horses." <laughs> but that's that's the beauty of this game is that so many things work. And and uh, regardless, I saw him a little pinchy pulling up. The work they put into that horse is there. The fact that they asked Dr. Latessa to look at the horse. The fact that they had Barry Carter look at the horse. Everybody wants to make sure that Spitfire is Spitfire and stays Spitfire. It's hard to believe this horse has been going for well over a year. And the only rest he got last year is when he AFibbed. Tough horse. Man. Such a good horse. And, and, and not to take away from a horse like Texong Soprano. Same timeline. Working his butt off forever. Anyway, uh, Spitfire Overseas is a beast, John. You're right. A very, very good horse and quite possibly one of the best horses we've ever had. And by time, you could say the best horse we've ever had. But we've had some good horses and we still do. Looks like money is in Monday also. Looks good. So uh, Bruno raced good last night in London. Tried in, what, probably 2-2-1. Two, two and one. Last half, 59 a bit a minute. Looked good. Great drive by Jay Harris. Drove the horse fantastic. And, and somebody say, well, I'll drop to the tool and follow. A little easier said than done. Of course, coming off a break in the first turn in Flamborough. He did a good job training him. Dominic has done a good job. I feel terrible for Dominic the last few months. You know, a lot of these horses get sick or not getting the, the, the races they need or not getting in. It's It hurts, right? When you, when you try hard and you put the work in. Because I keep telling you, you get out what you put in. But not always. You can work really, really hard and draw bad or get a bad drive or get in with tough horses or have broken equipment. The same feeling that Eric's probably going through right now, right? Trying to race Militant to 20 to 1 and being happy that you're finished fifth and then going home, cracking open a beer and realize, I'm happy I was fifth. I want to get out and win races. We got to give our trainers the tools to do that, which also is easier said than done. But we'll continue to. We continue to move forward. This game just changes ever so fast. It catches you off guard, right? You make a wrong turn, and all of a sudden, everything doesn't look right. But the flip side of that coin is you make a right turn, and everything feels great. And that's the way I feel today. The girls were great last night. We had a wonderful night together. Uh, had a great supper. And uh, got to swim. 
on our way to go race widespread panic. I hope we have some luck with him. I talked to Ron Burke uh, briefly. For those of you who don't know, his father passed away last week, so I was obviously uh, I said, "Geez, I'm really." I sent him a message afterwards, and you know, I'm really sorry to hear about your dad. And he goes, "Same thing I would say, honestly. If, if my dad passed away right now, and he will at some point, we all all lose our loved ones. Lived a great life, right? Raised some great kids, lived a lot, and did a lot of things that other people don't get a chance to do. Not everybody can say that." So we had a great chat about that and uh, talked about the horses. We talked about Mounts for All. Obviously, Ron has not been to Indiana. Adam Rucker is in charge of the horses down there. They've had a great run with um, uh, JK Victory overall for us, and he's in to go tonight. Renegade Gypsy, a little flat lately, but that'll happen in horse racing. And um, Mounts for All is out there now. I said, ah, the Mel horse hasn't come back as good yet, but we're working on him. He's getting there again. And for Marco, I know you're biting your lip, buddy. I told you this the other day, you can draw eight anywhere, and it's hard to believe that Mel Gibbs won in five life to, in five starts this year, county qualifiers, I believe, is four eight holes, I believe, or three eight holes and a nine hole. It's just terrible draws for this poor bugger. And we drew the eight hole again at the Meadows. Now, the one good thing is he'll get stretched out. They'll go in 57 at the Meadows. I'd like to leave, drop in three, four, five, follow along and have him scoot down the lane a little bit, uh, let his hobbles out. That's what I want to see happen with... That's what I want to see happen this week. And I said to Ron, he's just not quite there yet. So we do got another call. Uh, Addie Bear, I like that you're singing, honey, but can you wait one sec? Thanks. Um, do you got my iPad plugged in? Uh, good girl. Good girl. I have to call this guy back. So, um, yeah, I said to Ron, uh, you know, we have another call, the Muscle Mass there. And he goes, we won in the Kentucky Futurity with a Muscle Massive. He said, I love that breed. I said, so do I. A lawmaker was a Muscle Massive. It meant a lot to us. This Colt's a little strong in the face, but he raced good his first start. He's in to go at the Meadows tomorrow with the eight hole. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. If he, you know, if he, if he puts on some Hulk strength coming out of the gate, there's not much I can do about it. We're going to come, we're going to have to come forward, but I would like to, would like to race him off the pace, which maybe sounded like I was lying. I don't know. <laughs> But I would. I would like to see the horse race good day. I just want to see him run quote and race good because he did race good his, his first start. And then uh, we have a host of others today. We'll be, I'll be watching very, very closely. We have Arson, Time is on my side, Pickpocket, all those horses, and a host of others that are in today. we got a big day. There's only 9, 10, or 11 horses in to go. But it's been a great morning. I went to uh, Ohio, as I said, got into the track. I blew in there. I had half an hour. Uh, went in, trained, ready for landing. He trained actually very, very good. For, for getting over a half. I never thought he'd get over a half good. Uh, last quarter in like 28-4, which I'm surprised he could muster better than 30 or 31 on a half safely. And he was very good. I trained a mile in 2-6 last half, 59. He's ready to go for, for Wednesday at uh, the Meadows also. I am super excited to race this horse on Wednesday. Um, and then I trained J-Port Beach Boy, who I'm not super excited to race on Wednesday. But I wanted to make sure that he was nice and tight and on his toes. We're going to make a couple little shoeing adjustments again. I, I just want to talk to Jason about that and see what he thinks. Uh, switch to four aluminums on him. He's got one or two races left for us. And then uh, if, if he doesn't spark up and come forward, then he'll be doing very mediocre work in somebody else's burn in the near future. So we'll see how that plays out on Wednesday. But nevertheless, he trained good also. I actually trained him a little more, 2-2. Two -two. So he's plenty tight for uh, for Wednesday and ready to go. So that is where we're at right now at the stable.ca. As I said, just one of those, Addy Bear, turn that down, sweetheart, just a little bit. Just one of those great weekends. I had a ton of fun with the girls last yesterday afternoon and last night. Uh, we're having a great day so far. Hopefully we have some luck at the track. I'm going to do your videos uh, all the way to and from uh, the Meadows today, which gives me lots of time to get it done. So with that, I'm going to let you go. I hope you guys are having a wonderful start to your weekend also. Uh, for those of you who enjoy Thoroughbreds, I believe the Preakness is today, and that is why the races are running early. Um, good luck to everybody, whether you're watching, gambling, or just sitting down having a beer. Have a wonderful weekend. Take care.